In this video, I'm going to talk about how objects and classes work in C++. Objects and classes are a very important part of C++. In fact, the original name of an early version of C++ was actually C with classes. Using objects in our programs is part of what is called object-oriented programming, which is a way of writing computer programs that is focused on grouping together related data and the functions that work with that data. I'll post another video talking about why object-oriented programming is important, because it's kind of a big topic. But basically, writing our programs using objects and classes helps us to think about our programs, structure our programs, and work together on our programs in a way that very often helps us to write larger and better programs. So let's learn about objects and classes by going over an example. Let's say that we want to write a computer program to work with bank accounts. If you think about your bank account, there's many pieces of information that are associated with it. So for example, your name, the balance in the account, the PIN for the account, the address for the account, and perhaps the unique ID for the account, like the bank number. And there's probably many more pieces of information associated with the account. Already, working with this many variables, all separate, is going to be kind of a mess. Imagine, though, we need to work with multiple or many bank accounts. We could start trying to number the variables. So we could say name one, balance one, pin one, address one, ID one for the first bank account. And then maybe say name two, balance two, pin two, address two, ID two for the second account. We could even try creating a series of arrays for each chunk of information. But no matter what we do, this is going to be a messy way of working with the data. What we really need is a way to define a new type of thing that has these sorts of fields of information as sort of properties of that thing. Because a bank account just fundamentally has more than one chunk of information associated with it. So we can create what's called a class, which is a type of user-defined type. So here we'll say class bank account, open squiggly, close squiggly, we'll put a semicolon here, and then we'll say public colon string name and int balance. So what we've defined here is a new type of thing, a new type of object called bank account. And we're using the class keyword to do this. We could say that bank account is a class. It's a type of object. Here, we're defining two member variables, two members of this class, the string name and the int balance. Now this public keyword here is what's called a access specifier. And the public access specifier means that these members are accessible from outside of this class here. So what does this mean now that we have this class of type bank account? What this means is that we can create what are called bank account objects. And those bank account objects are gonna be instances of this class. So the class bank account is basically defining what it means to be a bank account. So if you're a bank account, you're going to have a name and a balance associated with you. Each object is like a specific bank account. So you could have a bank account for you, a bank account for your best friend, a bank account for somebody in your family, and so on. So a class defines what it means to be something like a bank account. Objects are going to be the individual instances of that thing. In this case, individual bank accounts. So we'll make one here. We'll say bank account, account one. And what this does is it creates a bank account object. And we would say that account one is an instance of the bank account class. It's an object instance. Now what we could do is set the name and balance for this specific bank account object by saying account1.name is equal to Najib. 
and account one dot balance is equal to 3000. So this dot operator here allows us to get at the member variables of our bank account object. So we say dot name dot balance, and we can access those member variables. Now, because of this public access modifier, these member variables are available to the main function. There are ways of hiding information associated with an object. We'll talk about those though in other videos. We could also print out this data. So we could say cout account1.name has account1.balance dollars. And then we'll say end L. So if we save and run this, we're going to get that Najib has $3,000. And that's what we get here. Now we can create more than one instance, more than one object for a class. So I could say bank account, account two, and this bank account object can have totally different information than account one, because it's a different object. It's a different bank account. So we'll say here, account two dot name is equal to Colvinder, account two dot balance is equal to 1000. And this account two object is another instance of this bank account class. So if bank account is like a blueprint, we can think of each one of these as the house that was built from that blueprint. We could also manipulate the member variables as well. So we could say here, account two dot balance is equal to account two dot balance minus 100. Maybe to perform a withdraw operation with this data. And we could output the account balance before and after this withdrawal. So we could say see out account two dot name has, and we'll say account two dot balance. And then dollars and then end L. And we'll just copy this and we'll paste it after we've done the withdraw. So we save and run this. We'll now get that Colvinder had a thousand followed by Colvinder has 900. And we get Colvinder has $1,000 and Colvinder has $900. So what we really have here is an operation, a withdraw operation that's working with the balance member variable of this object. One of the things that's really important about object oriented programming is that in addition to grouping together the data that's related, we're also going to group together the related functionalities that work with that data. What we can define are member functions and the member functions can work with our member variables. So for example, we can make a withdraw function. We'll say void withdraw int amount. So the function is going to accept an amount as an argument, and the function is called withdraw. We'll withdraw that amount from the balance. So we'll say balance is equal to balance minus the amount. So our member functions can directly access and work with our member variables, in this case, balance. And we're going to subtract the amount from the balance to get the new balance after doing a withdraw. We can call our member functions using the dot notation. So instead of saying here, account two dot balance is equal to account two dot balance minus 100, we could call that function. We'll say account two dot withdraw 100. And if we save and run this, we'll actually get the exact same results as before with Colvinder initially having an account balance of 1000 followed by 900 after the withdrawal. We could also define a member function for this print operation. We basically have a print operation here where we're saying account.name 
has this balance. And we use that operation three times here. We could define it inside a member function and just reuse that member function. So here we'll say void print and we'll say cout name has this balance in dollars and L. And again, we're accessing the member variables name and balance as part of this member function here. So we could just call that function here now by saying account one dot print and account two dot print before and after the withdrawal. So one more time here, account two dot print. And if we save and run the program, we're going to get the exact same results as before. Only now we've implemented the program with this object oriented style. So a couple more things I should mention. You might see these member functions referred to as methods. And you also might see these member variables referred to as attributes. And these are just sort of alternative naming conventions we can use for these concepts. So in this video, we've really only covered the absolute core topics in object oriented programming in C++. There's really quite a bit more, including some things that are very frequently used and some things that are less frequently used. I'm going to make a whole series of videos covering all of these topics. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.